I'm going to start with a quick review of what we demoed last week, just so people could sort of, those maybe who didn't see last week, just to sort of frame it. So just quickly look at the solution that uh, we did demo in detail last week. So I'm in the new Project Power app. You can see I've landed on the home page. I have this nice dashboard with some initial data I can look at. And I'm going to kind of click through this quickly just to frame it, and then you'll see where we take it from here as we extend it. So we have this concept, they included this idea of project requests, so we can create a, a, a form here where we can come in and uh, capture information about a request, apply a workflow or an approval process to that uh, using Power Automate and drive that through to the point where it then becomes a project. So we have this nice UI here that we can extend and configure to work and capture the data that you need to capture. Likewise with programs, so this idea of programs, and here we can consolidate information from the multiple projects below. So I have my financial data, so we set a program budget and benefits, but we have actually roll up of the data and information from the project specifically. Likewise, the program can have a status, and we actually know which projects make up that program. So that ability to create that higher order entity and describe a group of projects and organize them as a program, really helpful feature. And just a quick look at the project space. So I have my projects in here, and I'm going to click into one so you can see that. So some of that information may have come from the initial project request, other data we might be capturing, uh, the idea of capturing and managing the process around a business case. So I want to capture information about it, you know, the narrative, the prioritization, and so forth. I want to look at the finances of this specific project. What's its budget? Where are we right now? What are we expecting in terms of benefits? Some high level data that a lot of clients look to capture. I'm looking at my resource list. This is pulling from Project for the Web, and that's the next tab in the tasks. So you can see here the resources that have been assigned, how much work they have, how much they have done. So some high level summary data, and we're leveraging what's being captured elsewhere in the tool. And here's Project for the Web, embedded within this Power App solution. So I have my, my grid, let's switch the time zone here. I have my grid showing who's working on what, what tasks are done. I can mark the task complete, get a little time, and see how stuff is progressing and create, add new tasks and so forth here. I can also look at that as part of Project for the Web in this idea of a board. I'm gonna switch my board view to progress just quickly, and you can see which tasks are started, which ones are in progress, and maybe I'm gonna make that one complete. Okay, so I have that alternate view. And then lastly, the idea of a timeline. So I'm gonna come up here and look at this and just scroll to task quickly. And now we can view that same schedule in a basic Gantt chart showing the interdependency and the interplay between tasks, which tasks are complete by being fully highlighted in the dark blue and so forth. I can zoom in, zoom out, look at that schedule and see you know, where we're at in terms of all of the tasks. So all of that information is project for the web. It's, it's here, I could also open it in project uh, separately and work on it, but all that capability is embedded within the solution. And then there's some these other components that Jim mentioned when he went over that uh, the chart with the different pieces to this. It's risks, issues, changes, and status reports. Those of you who have used Project Online in the past, a lot of this data would have occurred in the SharePoint site. Now it is here uh, as part of the overall project experience, and each one of them is its own power app with the data being stored in the Dataverse for us to use both in this solution in Power BI for reporting, or potentially leverage that data in another solution that you may have in another business system. So my risks, issues, change requests, and then my ability to create a status report, fill out that status report, and you can see we have a couple of past status reports, to be able to go back and look at how this project has progressed over time. So just a quick view, I wanted you to see what we covered last week in a lot more detail, just to frame where we are and where we're headed with this. So there's a lot of capability here. Jim mentioned that you know, Microsoft's research showed that this is what a lot of people want to use, but some clients need to use more. They need to be able to go further than this. So here's the extension that we've done. Now I've, I've added a new watch to see my work, my timesheets, other things have come in. So I'm gonna to jump to an environment here that has a lot of that same data. Project request is the same. We're using and leveraging the Microsoft Power Apps and components, so I won't, I won't go through those again. But I wanna jump into projects I'm gonna grab that same project so you can see what's changed as we extend the solution. Summary data is similar, business case data is the same, 
But here's where our extensions start to come into play. Now we have all of our data in here, the ability to do a much richer uh, financial analysis where that's required. So if I just, I'm gonna turn off the compare for just a second, you can see how I would fill out this budget data. I've got my different expense types and I've captured my budget. And as I showed there, I could change my date range. I could look at this in a quarterly budget, maybe an annual budget. I can look at last year, this year. I could set a custom range, hit apply, and now look at that data in the way I need to. Or I can compare, I wanna to compare to forecast, which is what was there just when we came onto the screen, so that I can look at what was our original budget, what are we now forecasting as the project progresses, and highlight where we're seeing some delta or difference in the data, so that we can start to manage finances at a much more granular level. So we provide this capability. I may also wanna pivot this to look at it by expense type is a common thing where people have CapEx and OpEx expenses. You may have other cost categories you're trying to track and we can look at all of that data here. Likewise, we've added some additional capabilities around resource planning. Now we can look at our resources in comparison to where they're being used in other projects. We turn this off for a second and look at my project team. Here you can see the resources that I have on the project, those marked with the little green check mark. They're active on my project, but wherever you see red, there's something there I might wanna know in that there is an overage. Ehrlich is over allocated in that particular month and I might want to, as a PM, look into that in greater detail. We also have generic resources here where we need to add them to our project. And I'm gonna show you the first of two ways we might go about this. I can check on this and look at my resources and say, okay, I wanna look down here. This is my overall resource pool, find resource, and let's say best match. And now I could see the three options or two options really, because the generic is there, that I have to replace the generic on this project and, and add them to my team. And I could simply pick one and hit replace and they'll be added to the project and away I go. So as a PM or an owner of this project, I could go about uh, assigning or switching the generics to named resources by doing the analysis and the, and the look into the resource pool as to who has availability and who's the best fit based on the role I'm trying to fill. I can also look at this, let me just turn this off for a second, I'd look at how I compare from what I committed to to what I actually have scheduled. And the scheduled work will be coming from the work plan, which I'm gonna show next in the tooling we might be using, Project Pro or otherwise. So you can see here that we had commitments to resources, but in some cases, the schedule, either stuff's been delayed or stuff's taking too long. And so the schedule effort is now exceeding in some cases what was originally committed. And we're gonna to need to handle that and deal with that as a project manager. So I have that ability to quickly see, what did they say we were gonna do? What are we actually doing? If I click on the work plan, I wanna show something here. Jim mentioned this about tool of choice and you're gonna see that come to life here. Let me just switch back to the task view first and then I'll come back to there is here in the task view, this is my tasks and schedules and, uh, that's coming in here. And this task list could be coming from project for the web or project professional, depending on circumstance. So one project might be using project for the web because that makes sense for what they wanna do. And someone else may need to use project pro uh, because of some capabilities or, or whatever the, the reason might be. We incorporate both. So whichever tools you used here to do the schedule, we can draw that data in and view it here. You update the schedule in the tool of choice, but you can view the impact and, and summary and look at the schedule here. Likewise, if I jump back to the backlog, you may also be managing some tasks in a tool like Azure DevOps, which is where this data is coming from. Or maybe it's Jira in case you're using that tool. So here we can incorporate both an, an agile tooling exercise as well as a conventional project management tool to have an overall view and sort of that adaptive or hybrid model that we see so many of our clients trying to support. So tool of choice, it's very important. The risks, issues, changes in status report, we're leveraging what Microsoft's providing out of the box. We haven't changed those here. That's not an extension we're doing. They can be configured. You can add more fields and so forth to them as you need to for your business requirements, but that's the power of the Power App. But I wanted you to see those key extensions that we've done. Next piece I'll dive into is the analyzer. The analyzer is similar to what we had in project uh, online to do portfolio optimization. I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways that we support that. 
First thing I'm looking at here is a quick list view, and I'll spend a bit of time on these different lists. You're seeing I'm organized by portfolio, and down the left I want to highlight the different tools of choice that are in play. This project is being managed in Project for the Web, likewise. Azure DevOps, this one's in Project Pro, and on down the list. So some clients need to use multiple tools for a project or different tools depending on different circumstances, but here we're able to see them all in one central view. We're able to do our prioritization, our statusing, uh, our business cases, regardless of the tool that we're using at the other end. So we bring that tool of choice and then allow us to use it here. We have different views in here. So maybe we want to look at these projects and see how they relate in a Gantt chart. So we can have that view. And now I'm going to show you the first of two possible methods to do prioritization. This one being the more conventional list priority type model. So I'm going to switch to my prioritization view. There it is. And you can see how each project scored itself or was scored when it was submitted against a set of objectives or, or criteria that we defined in the configuration. And that calculated the score. We have the ability here to stack rank the project. So I could say, you know, this project isn't as important as we thought and move it down. Okay move another project up. Maybe something has to jump forward or jump up the list because of a change in circumstance. So we can quickly drag and drop it. Or I may want to take this to that next level. And Jim showed a screenshot of this. It's the idea that I need to look at this from a budget perspective. And I'm going to say we have a target. So I'm going to pick up my target. And you can see that in some of the months, we're over our budget. So we could start to look at, well, what if we start taking some of the projects that are the least important, some are proposed and some are active, out of our model. And you can see the numbers are starting to improve. And I think if I take one more out, you see a marked improvement. There we go. And I could keep playing with that till I get to the kind of budget scenario that I want. Uh, I could also look at this and say, well, maybe I just want to change the timing of some of these projects. So I'm going to zoom out. Uh, to years just to have a different look at this and say, yeah, we're going to do that project, but let's delay it. And you can see my budget started to improve, although this month got worse, so I'd have to do some more work. Maybe I move this project out too and see if that makes a difference. It does. And when I'm done doing that modeling, this is all about what if scenarios. I could come in here and say, save that scenario. Perhaps I want to review it with management later. I want to discuss it in a group setting and say, hey, we did a couple of different scenarios. Let me show them to you and decide how we want to proceed. Likewise, I could look all of, at all of this via the same kind of view, only this time looking at it in a resource context. And maybe I move that project out even further and we'll see that my resource pooling constraints start to change as well. Maybe I move uh, this guy back out again as I had it before and you'll see the resource pool is starting to improve. So I have this ability to look at it both as money, or in this case as available headcount, and where do we want to slot things to be able to get the work done based on the resource pool we have. So that's the conventional prioritization model. Uh, it's very similar to what Project Online would have, would have shown in the past or would have used. Now let's look at it slightly differently. Let's go to a board view. So I'm going to go to my strategic alignment board view, just the first of several that I want to show. Here I'm looking at the columns are my uh, are my my strategy or how I'm aligned to it. My lanes are the different corporate goals I have. You'll see these things called strings, and I'll just quickly show those. In here we have this idea idea that we can define dependencies. So this project is dependent on PiperNet. Okay, and that's a blue dependency, but it also has a related dependency or a related connection to this advanced voice biometric, which is the green line. And the red line denotes a blocker. So very quickly, we can show visually what projects are tied to what and what is that relationship. Now, to look at more of an agile or lean for, uh, prioritization, I'm going to grab goals by program. So this could be by program increment, as, as Jim mentioned and showed so that I this screenshot. And you can see here, I have set my different goals as my columns, my customer satisfaction, grown business, run business, and transformation. Each one has a financial constraint, and in some cases, the work we have in that constraint already, or that work in that column rather, exceeds that constraint. In other cases, it does not. Again, you can see the relationships between the different projects within each program. But here's my backlog, and I could start to bring projects into the different uh, programs uh, underneath the different columns and what have you. 
I start to plan things out. Where do I want to fit things in this particular program increment or perhaps the next program increment and so, so on. So a very visual, tactile way of doing our prioritization, more in line with lean and scaled agile and how, how more modern uh, agile-based planning and prioritization functions. So we support that here in the analyzer as well. Lastly, I just quickly show you the roadmap feature that we include in here. It's another way of visualizing that same work. Here I'm grouped by business unit. It's showing the interrelationship between the different uh, projects within that particular business unit, or perhaps that's a particular project or product line rather. And I want to look at that and see how I am doing, uh, how things are relating. Where do I have you know, the color coding where I may have an overall health issue that I should dive into. So it's another way of visualizing that same data. Next thing I want to spend a bit of time on is the resource plan. Now, let's look at that data as a resource manager instead of a PM. So here I'm looking at, let me just pop this up for a second, my entire resource pool that I'm responsible for perhaps and where do I have conflicts? You can see the color coding very quickly. And if I look at any one of these resources, I could see what projects they're on and where they are. And remember earlier, we were asking for a PM. So let's go back and look at that same scenario. There's that project we were on. I could perform the same exercise here to say, uh, where are, you know, which project or who should I put on this project, sorry. So what's my best match? So the same data, same information, same UI, really comes down to whether that's a role that the resource manager or resource manager function should fulfill, or can the PM do that themselves? They're all working off the same information depending on how you want to proceed. So very quickly, a resource manager can see what are all of the conflicts and different projects that we have in play? Where do people need resources? Who's the best fit? How do I support the projects in getting their work done by providing them you know, clear line of sight to the people they need when they need them. So that's the advanced resource capabilities that we provide. Now let's look at some of the other capabilities here Jim did mention, my work. So now I can view as the person I've logged into all of the tasks that I've been assigned. I could come in and say, well, I've, I've done uh, 100 hours on that task. So now I'm on 100%, so I've done the percentage. So I've now completed that task. And I could do those updates on tasks here. I could view that more in a board view. Maybe I want to look at it and say, well, this one here, we're going to defer this particular task uh, and leave it for later. So I have different formats of how I might do that when I start to look at my work. And then the more advanced scenario, and some clients do need this, we run into it quite frequently, is the idea of being able to do time sheeting. So this will provide us the ability to do a timesheet regardless of whether the work was originally on a project for the web project, maybe even a planner project, we didn't talk about that, or in Azure DevOps or in Project Pro. But I could come in here and complete my timesheet for the tasks that have been assigned to me, and now I can time phase the data, show progress, highlight what's left, uh, work that I need to do, and submit that timesheet and run a full timesheet process from inside this Power App user experience. So that's a quick look at the functionality that, that we're providing when we add the one plan as an, ex, one plan as an extension to Microsoft's Power Platform. I'm going to jump to a third environment just quickly because what I want to highlight is how, where you can take this, what this opportunity, what opportunities are given to you with this solution. Jim talked about this, the whole vision of the Microsoft, the Power App Platform and where you can go. And so in this environment, I want to highlight a couple of things. We've added in the concept of portfolios, so a third layer to that model, project program now all the way up to portfolios, where again, they can have owners, they can have budgets, they can have status reports, and all kinds of structure and business case data around the portfolio. Or maybe you wanna build out your demand management and do things like challenges and other ideation solutions and ideas. Power Apps is a fantastic format for doing that, and you can see we've added some of that capability here. Or you perhaps want to articulate your corporate strategy and start capturing things like objectives and key results. Well, another power app in this particular demo environment where we've articulated our key objectives that we're trying to accomplish and the key results that relate to them. And then we can relate those to the projects and programs that we're going to do to achieve those results. The Power Platform gives us all kinds of capability here and things that we can go and do and build. 
clients I, I've talked to want to do things like you know sophisticated benefits realization and tracking. Great, perfect candidate for a power app inside this platform to then relate it back to the projects that you're managing and the programs and so forth. And there's lots of other ideas. What Microsoft's done with this move towards this platform is, is unlock a lot of capabilities and ways for us to interact with key things that people are trying to do in a business, both as a PMO trying to execute, but the organization as a whole, and interact, provide data, leverage data, and build you know, graphical user interface capabilities for people to submit information, view, and consume that data. It's a very powerful platform, and we're very excited about where we can take it. So we wanted you to see not just how we've extended it, but some ideas and concepts around how you can take it even further to meet your business needs.